So we have modeled this plant uh, many different ways. We've talked all about modeling. And today we're going to talk about just the basics of control once you have a system and you actually want to control it in some way. So we've looked at this system a lot and we usually have some sort of input going into our system and I'm going to specify this one. Usually we're looking at linear systems so there's one input and one output. Um, we'll mostly be working with that when you do feedback control that's usually the case. In, if you do a state-based control, you can have multiple outputs and things like that. For now, we're going to be dealing with single input and single output systems. Okay, so you have an output here. Uh, I'm going to just arbitrarily call it Y. We've been using that quite a bit. So you have a system. You have you can input something into it to make it change. So and that affects the input affects the output. But what we really want to do in control is control this output to something. We want to make it, for example. If we have a DC-DC converter, a power converter, we want the output to be maybe 5 volts. Say we're trying to make a USB application. We need it to be 5 volts because that's the standard. Um, if you're flying an airplane, you want to go to a certain altitude. You have a set point of a certain altitude. So you have a, what we call usually a reference or a set point, And that's usually where we want our output to go to. So we're actually going to write it over here. Um, we're just going to call it reference. If it's a voltage or current, you usually put like IREF or VREF here. For now, we'll just call it the reference. There's a reference value. And generally, we'll assume that it's a constant, but this constant can also change depending on, you know, you're changing your system, you want to fly to a higher altitude, you can change this reference. But what we really want is to make sure that Y is equal to that reference. So what we want to do is look at our our output and actually compare it to that reference, right? So if it's at the reference already, so usually you do plus reference and minus this value. So if they're exactly at the same point, uh, this is a summing block. Um, so we take the reference, we subtract the output. If they're exactly the same, it's zero and our, our system is already set, we're good. If it is too low, this number, this value coming out here, will be positive, right? So then that will feed back into our system here. I haven't connected, finished it yet, um, but I just wanted to explain the reference difference. If our V out is too high, then we'll have a negative value coming out of here, right? Because the reference minus the larger value will be negative. So what we do is we take that, that difference, and we call this the error. And this is our just subtraction, so we're at the error of the output relative to the reference, wherever we want it to go. And we put that error into, I didn't leave much space for myself here, but into our controller. Okay, so this is the part that we will be working on next, is the actual controller for the system. And people call that various different things. I'm just going to call it GC. It doesn't really matter what's in here, but it would also be most of the ones we're going to work with are going to be some sort of transfer function. So there's some transfer function for the controller, and there's some transfer function for the plant. And this is our basic feedback control. So our error, we see our, we generate some output, we compare it to our reference, we see the error, we put that error into the controller and the controller will change the input of the plant based on if it's above or below the reference point. So this is our basic setup and we're going to be talking about controllers. First we're going to try to introduce the proportional, proportional integral and proportional derivative, also known as P, PI, and PID control and that would be give us a specific transfer function that goes inside of this. So I just wanted to explain the basics of it and then we'll go on to actually looking at how do we design these controllers.